This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right guys, here's what I'm working on. So, this is a paint booth and it's a makeup air unit. What I ended up doing is I replaced the regulator here and the solenoid, added a T down here so we could check pressure, checked my differential, had some problems with the pressure switches. I was kind of all screwed up. This is an older one. Spray Tech gave me the name and phone number of a guy. He told me one of the things I really needed to know, because what's going on is the pilot would not light every time. It seems like it's a pilot issue. This Blimo valve here was flipped the other way. So when it's in the bake cycle, they actually want it like this. And in spray cycle, they want it open. We're flipping it around. I'm hoping we're doing it the right way. From the way it was described to me, and this guy, that's all he does. We're gonna try this, see how it runs. Now this basically changes like that. And he's saying that it was reversed. The only other thing we had that could have been wrong was our UV bulb there. Uh, that's how it senses that it has a flame or not. He said, stare into it, see if you see any flickering, which I did not see any flickering. So here's the pilot. So we're gonna go ahead, put this back. I think what we had going on is our dampers are in the wrong spot. That's our issue. So I got that back there. Don't want to get too tight on that. I've cleaned the pilot out. I've done everything under the sun. I've adjusted the electrodes. There's a little bit of a crack here on that, but cleaned all the main burners there out. Did a little bit of everything. That's the, the fight that I've got going on right now. Right there is the blower. Big old monster old fashioned blower. No VFD, none of that stuff. He's like, man, don't have VFD. I'm like, no, not at all, dude. Super nice guy though. He, he actually works on these and he took the time to talk to me. I could use a little, little oiling. So I flipped that around, which hopefully it stays there until it goes into the spray, which then supposedly will open it up. We've got an issue with it not firing every time. Kick that on. Honeywell's coming on. Okay, we're gonna turn on, turn on the heat. So it should light up, I hope. Let's go see what the what the dampers are doing. The bake is on and off here. When you flip on bake, that brings the dampers to the to the uh, vertical position. Let's see where it goes. We're locked out. Go ahead and reset it. See if we can get over here to the pilot. See what the dampers are at. See if they're backwards. That's opposite of what we want. Uh, so maybe it was right. Darn it, I was hoping it was wrong. Right there it is pilot, and it just alarmed out. I've checked my spark there, it's working fine. Like I said, we just replaced the solenoid here. I thought maybe it was sticking to make sure my regulator was replaced. Thought maybe it wasn't doing its thing. So there, it just took a dump. All right, so I put it in bake mode. Let's see where these dampers are going. In bake mode, it's opening up. So yeah, it was right the other way. It was right, so we gotta change that back. Can't get your fingers on that either. There. It's only so much you can do with this stupid thing. I mean, it's got a good spark to it. Porcelain's not cracked. Look right there, that's all perfectly clean. I think I already done taking this apart, if I remember correctly. I had taken this all apart. You start second guessing yourself because you really don't know where else to go with it. I mean, this is the guy that, that's all he does is these. So what else you to do? Yeah, I'm 99% sure I took all this crap apart. Yeah, it's completely open. Down here on the bottom, I seen this little square thing. And the square thing was this little thing right here. They're all the way across there. They have loosened up on all of these. So I am going through and tightening these up. Look at this one right here. That one of these completely fell off the bottom. Well, that's what's holding that plate in there. And I can't help but wonder, I'm hoping that was allowing air to sneak underneath of it and through it, causing a disturbance on my pilot. Otherwise, all this here looks fairly okay. I mean, there's a little bit of roughness to it, but the thing's 22 years old. Let's see if we can make this thing run. So we got that back on. I'm gonna turn that bake off and see if we can get it to light normal. Well, I guess we'll just let it, we'll just see what happens first. Look at that, instantly pilot. No problem at all. 
make it start over again. Pile it perfect every time. It's better than what it was doing. I'll just turn the main off here. Boom. Beautiful. Took a little longer that time. Now what I did on that igniter spark box down here, I uh, used a screwdriver, grounded it, brought it to it, pulled it away, used an insulated screwdriver and all that happy stuff. No, no issues with that. Man, I hope to goodness that's what it freaking is. Let's go see whether it's in bake or what's going on. Now it's got that front display is on. There we go. See it? Sort of. It's lighting. So in the bake position, it's kind of closed down. Okay, let's turn bake off. See how the pressure started to drop. Let's go ahead and hit reset. Let it start over again. This is in a traditional mode that it would start in. Boom, instantly. Yeah, I'm gonna hit reset and run over to the other side. See if I can see what that does. Yeah, it was already lit up. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Let her eat. See how she does. So there you go. You can see the main burner. May have just finally gotten it. Oh my goodness. That stupid plate. That little dinky plate thing. All right, it's still kicking on every time. Perfect. Guys, I think we finally got it. Holy crap, if I would've just, I, I, that, that thing was way in the back. It was dark, you can't see. Main burners and stuff look good. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this thing up, guys. What the hell, this thing's acting stupid. That's gonna get it for now, I guess. As you can see, we just got all kinds of different things going on today. We'll just record little things that we do through the week, and if nothing happens, you can see what the heck I'm doing. We do all kinds of odds and ends stuff, I mean, it's not always HVAC. I mean, this make up air, but it's a freaking paint booth. You know, it's just what it is. My work on dehumidifier, uh, air dryer for uh, air compressor, whatever. A little everything. So anyhow, on to the next one, guys. All right, guys. So we're working on this beater chiller from 1999 area. And this thing has lived a hard life. We've got two compressors that are bad. One's locked up, one's shorted. We lost some of the controls here on the board that got wet somebody didn't get the door secured. This is 480, so I've got everything killed. I've verified all powers off. I've been doing some tracking. I haven't done many of these. I had to figure out how Train does all their goofy terminal blocks and stuff, and it's not bad once you know what you're looking for. So we found out where everything's at. All said and done, we have a circuit here where we've got all the safeties for the compressor coming from this terminal block here, going to this terminal block over here. And the way we figured that out, I'm through a fuse, comes through a pressure switch, a temperature switch, temperature switch, auxiliary contacts, which are on the back of that breaker, and eventually gets over here to terminal block seven, which then feeds into these inputs on the board. So when we ended up jumping the terminal block out, eliminating all those things that should have locked the compressor out, it still did it. What we were getting was compressor trip. And see, there's terminals back of the breakers there. There's, if you turn this off, that breaks the contact on the back just like a auxiliary switches on a contactor. The board obviously looks like it got wet. So it looks like we got some damage there. We jumped it, it's still locked out. All said and done, what we come down to is the board is bad. We've already got two compressors out. We got a condenser coil that's leaking. The thing is R22, it needs replaced, but it just hasn't happened yet. All right, so what we're doing here, and you're gonna laugh, but I don't have a whole lot of options. You ain't gonna pick this board up at Walmart. So what I've done is I've went through already and taking a plug like this, marked where the relays are at, which one they're going to, and we're actually cutting them out. So you see, I've already done that on these here. This is circuit two, this is circuit one. What we're gonna do, because right now what we had to do, and the maintenance guys did this before I got here, because it bypasses all the safeties, but they needed the machinery to run because they can't run the presses in there. So they ran it off this contactor over here. There's no safety controls when you do it like that. This compressor is okay, but it's low on charge. Compressor on circuit two is okay. It was locking out because they thought there was a failure in there. So what we've done, I already got everything marked up here, what it's gonna be when we put it back. So we're taking the old Milwaukee here and literally are going through and cutting in between here so we can put those on per relay per relay. That's what we're doing right now, which is crazy 
but you have no other choice unless you want to pull the pins out one by one, potentially screw up, which you do have all the wires labeled, but this is a lot easier. <laughs> So we're separating them that way there. And then we're coming in. Trim it up a little bit, pop off the extra, and that's what we're doing. This is some crazy stuff. Normally would never do this on a newer system, but like I said, you're not going to get parts for this thing anytime soon. Why waste a bunch of money on it? The thing needs replaced, but it's not happening. So this is what we're doing. Now, just keep in mind, I've got to switch all the pressure switches and temperature inputs and stuff like that yet. So right now, just to make sure it's working, I'm just switching the compressor circuit only to make sure it don't lock out. So I'm gonna put the circuit that supposedly locks out on circuit A and make sure it runs. And if it does, then I am confirmed that it is the board that's bad and that we can go ahead and continue further forward with it, making this thing run. This has been a real learning experience. That's, that's my uh, first uh, problem child to start off with is something that somebody else has already doctored and tinkered. I'm not a train fan at all. They should have made these mirrored opposite of each other. That way you could have went pop, 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 pop. They did not do that. Nope. Uh, we're gonna switch K11 with K3, K12 with K4, K1 with K5, K2 with K6. That's gonna be my circuit for circuit. And down here on the board, it says K11, 12, 1. So even though we're gonna switch them, I know where they originally went, which is why I did it like that. We're going through, unfortunately, having to trim wire ties galore here. The thing has one good, one working compressor here. That's, that's what we got, one working compressor. When I put it in test mode, it would bring on this one, but it would not bring on that one. And this one actually has a locked rotor. It was pulling 100 and I think 100 and something odd amps. That was yesterday. Like I said, I stayed here for a while yesterday, gave it my all, went home, studied this. What this is going to do is it should fall down an alarm right away. It's got a timer that lets the solution mix first. What we ended up having to do, not only did it have to switch the outputs from circuit A, or let's just say circuit one to circuit two. Obviously that was the first start, but thing I forgot to do, which I'm gonna pull a blame it on somebody else card, but we didn't wanna switch the proving switches because we figured the proving switches would be under their own category because that's what they had them over here. They called it a compressor proving input. Whereas this over here was the compressor protection circuit or whatever, the uh, trip circuit. So we figured it was under two different labels, but it's not. They kind of put it under the same one. So what we ended up having to do to make it simple to reverse it if we need to, we went ahead and jumped these here over to here and, th and that one would have been there if I had two compressors, but I don't. Taped off the ones that are there. I should have probably just done it up here. I finally figured out where they were. I literally had to go through here and trim some of these up. So I could have switched them here and here. That would have been the easiest thing to do, which I'm about half tempted to put it back, but whatever, now that I've already got it running. That's finished. See right now, it thinks it's running circuit one, but it's really running circuit two. So one and two are swapped. It don't know the difference but all the protection circuitry is still back in there. Once it hits about 80 degrees area, I notice that's when it's bringing on the uh, condenser fans here, which are gonna come on. You kind of come in here to status. There's your set point, 65 degrees, entering 79, leaving 77 and dropping. K11 is on, 12's locked out by the hot start, which don't matter because it ain't gonna run anyway. K3 is enabled and four is locked out. Saturated condensing temperature is 92 degrees. So unless it brings that on, which it's bringing it down in temp there, it kind of shot up there pretty quick. What worries me is when it uh, gets warmer out, we'll be able to keep up. I'm, I'm assuming it probably will because we are running circuit two over here on that one there and it is pulling it down. Oh, and then we had to switch the solenoids here, which I haven't showed that yet on the schematic, but it is there. So that was the solenoids because those obviously have to open. But that was done by the maintenance guys already once before. So that's done. Basically when I originally got here, I checked all my circuits there and it was fine. And sure enough, it was kind of doubling back here. The problem we had down here was is the outputs on the one uh, relay because it tripped out so quickly, partially because I didn't have the proving switch on the contactor closing, but also we have a bad relay here. Or the relay that always controls the first contactor that wanted to come on was not sending power out. On that one, it was best just to measure across it. Sure enough, it had open, so it had 120 volts there. 
that was the problem there. You mark things out here. It's running, it's a turd, it needs replaced very badly. Well, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll choose to replace and not, uh, not repair. Other than that guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I surely didn't, but you know, I am prepared next time I run into one of these, what to look for. There's only one way to learn and that is to dig in there and get at it, especially on something this old. One of them things where we got her and we're good to go.